Thanks for staying with us here on the AM show. It's a Wednesday. Today is the 30th of December. We will not see this day in 2020 ever again. So uh, make the best out of today. Uh, don't say I told you and don't miss it. Now, the Attorney General has asked the Supreme Court to quash a decision by the whole High Court to put an injunction on the gazetting of Member of Parliament elect for Hohoi John Peter Amewu. That story is still very hot. There are various angles to it. Uh, just so we don't confuse you, we want to break the issues down. And then also, what's the latest with the NDC? It's the very last day, the 21 day uh, elapses today. Will they indeed be in court today? Our court correspondent joins us in studio uh, in, to help us break all the issues down. Joseph Akabla is here. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mama V. And yeah. Good morning to Gifty. Why are you saying Gifty and looking at Mama V? <laughs> okay, so good morning to you, Mama V, and good morning to you. That's Gifty right. As well. That's right. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank when you. two politicians meet. Seriously? Uh, she's, a, she's a politician, I'm not. For where? It's good to have you. It's good to yeah. have you, Joseph. Yeah. Uh, so just at this issue with the AG, explain uh, to us and to our viewers, and let's try and see if we can answer the question why it is the AG that's handling this issue when the person concerned is John Peter Mewu. Okay, and so uh, the Attorney General uh, was sued together with uh, Peter Mewu and the Electoral Commission by the individuals who filed that particular matter. And the argument they are making is that uh, proud to the creation of the new regions, they were part, those traditional areas, uh, Santrofi, uh, Lolobi, Akpafu, and Lipe, were part of the Hohoi constituency. And so they voted in the Hohoi constituency. And so they make the point that uh, because of uh, the EC not creating a constituency for them and taking them out of the Hohoi constituency, they could not vote for a parliamentary candidate and that their rights have been breached. And so they ask that the court uh, place an injunction on the gazetting of Peter Meu, who won the Hoho elections eventually, uh, on the gazetting on his declaration as the winner of that particular elections. And yeah. so the AG is a defendant in this particular matter, uh -huh. and the AG has decided to exercise the rights to take the matter up to the Supreme Court. And the point the AG makes is, in June 2020, there was a Supreme Court decision. Uh, some individuals had filed a case to make the point that those traditional areas, the SAL traditional areas, they could not uh, vote in the Hawaii constituency. The reason being that the constitutional requirement is that a constituency cannot fall within two districts, neither can it fall in two regions. Sure. And so the Supreme Court held that they cannot vote in that particular area. Those traditional areas are not part of the Hawaii constituency. And so what should have been done is that the EC should have then created a constituency for them. The EC mm -hmm. said it put the instrument in court and the requirement, the arrangement is such that you can't just create one and so it's a realignment, it will just realign all of them again and so it's an mm. instrument that will recognize all constituencies again and will bring one more. But you and see, so, right, please go ahead. So they put that instrument in the, at the, at the, high, at the parliament, they put it before parliament, it couldn't mature before parliament rose and so that was not done. And so obviously it was not the fault of the people who were taken out of voting in Ohoi that the law, the constituency was not created. It wasn't their fault. And so their argument is that, look, we should have voted for an MP, decided that you've created new regions, and the result was that we couldn't vote in this particular area. But what happens to us now? Mm. Our rights have been breached. And so Absolutely. because of that, don't allow it to proceed. Mm. But the Attorney General's argument, which he has put before the Supreme Court, is that when the court decides to grant an injunction, and we need to point out that the injunction that the court granted was ex parte, the AG, uh, Mr. Amewu's lawyers and the Electoral Commission were not present in court. The law allows that in the exceptional circumstances you can go without going on notice to file such an application. The AG's argument is that the basic thing that the court should have asked is that do these individuals have a right that must be protected? Mm -hmm. And the AG's argument is that yes, they have a right, but they do not have voting rights in Hohoi constituency. They have a right because as a stand, the Supreme Court says you can't vote in Hohoi, so it is law. You should be voting in a constituency that has been created for you. But that, that has not been done. Has not been that has created. not been done. So the AG's argument is that you have no right in the Hohoi elections, which you are now trying to impede the declaration. The Hohoi people who are supposed to vote, the law recognizes them. They have voted for someone to win. 
you were part of them previously. The, the law now says you can't vote there anymore because mm. we've created new regions. Mm. So this, the argument is that, the AG's argument is that the court ought not to have granted that particular remedy because they do not have voting rights in the whole constitu constituency which they are now impeding. Okay, so help me understand this. How do you just suppose the fact that these people who have gone to court are being told you don't have voting rights in this particular constituency, mm. but then the AG seem to have a case against uh, the court's jurisdiction. Yes. So, so is it is it an, an issue of jurisdiction on the side of those who are seeking the redress or on the side of the judge? And so the, the argument injunction? he's making is that because there is no right to be protected, there was no case properly so filed in the court to have enabled the court to have heard it. Ideally, the point he's making is that they should have either gone to the high court to make the case that our rights... The electoral commission did not make, make, make it possible to for for us from vote voting. And yeah. also decide who represents us in parliament. And yes. so those rights have been breached. And so the AG's point is that it is not in doubt that you cannot vote in Hawaii. So how can you say that your rights have been breached in an area that you cannot vote in and so you are going to disturb their rights that they've exercised? It should go against the electoral commission and the state actors who failed to ensure that your, cons your uh, constituency was created to enable you to vote there. So I see that, I mean, apart from the long uh, write-up and the procedures, the basic thing, I guess, for any person to understand is sue electoral commission, sue the states uh, for disenfranchising you, for disallowing you from taking part in the parliamentary exactly. elections, but not the action not that Not the taken. action that you've taken against the Hohoi constituency Please. and the people. But they're, they're, I mean, the argument that they or their lawyers also made, uh, led by Chachu Chikata, they made before the court was that, I mean, look, these are people who were part of the whole constituency. They were voting here and you decided to take them out. And once you didn't provide that mm. for them, you have denied them yeah. that right. And they think that that action is also appropriate. And so all these are matters that have been put before the Supreme Court and yeah. the Supreme Court will be well, which it's what very, It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. but, but, but the but, back story mm -hmm. to the whole politicking mm -hmm. that people, have, to people from the area have explained is that Professor Margaret Kweku, who lost the election, the hails, from, is, hails from those traditional areas and is quite strong in those areas. Mm. And so their argument too is to the effect from the back politics is that could the election results have been different if they, those areas they had voted? voted? That's the question that... Mm. No, but I, I, but I think the fundamental thing is here is that people have been disenfranchised. Mm. Yes. I, think is that, I, think, I think that's pretty fundamental because if you created new regions and for that matter altered the constituency so that some, a group of people cannot vote, then there had to have been a provision. I mean, maybe send the voters register that you, uh, on, in which you registered them to a close-by constituency. Where and they and it's not just about so they've been disenfranchised. They've been denied representation to for the next four years. Yes, I, I mean, that's, that, those two are sort of intertwined. intertwined yeah, the, yeah. Yes, so yeah. you deny me the opportunity to vote, to vote, and now I have no representation in Parliament. Mm -hmm. so, so what am I? Exactly. And, and that, no, but the, I mean, I'm sure the EC, so the EC has a lot the, to answer. I think the corporate here, case. really, with the discussion that we're having is the Electoral Commission. What's their position? Have the, we their from their the, argument. Apart the point, from the, that argument that I put a, a regulation and then it didn't, it didn't mature. Yeah. It's not the people's business. Yeah. yeah. Because, no. you know, we know the processes that, you know, when you send things to Parliament, you go through. Yeah. So it should have all been factored. And you should have, yeah, should have yeah. considered and that. And especially when, as far back, in fact, the Supreme Court judgment, the June one, yeah. made the point that they should take steps in June, June 2020, said yeah. take steps to ensure that you realign the constituencies to make provision for those you've taken from the whole constituency now. And so from June, obviously, the 21 days could have been possible if the steps had been taken Absolutely. Yeah. on time all the yeah. way till December. Yeah. And even now, as we count down, whether it's possible or not, only time will tell, but it should be done before. Uh, Professor Kwekwaza, uh, your friend, has been making some very interesting okay. arguments, and he seemed to suggest that that could be possible before we swear in the 8th Parliament. Mm. Explain his argument. He's been saying that since 9th January, that, I mean, mm. uh, since 9th December, that right after the declaration, if the EC was, in fact, he said it on the day before the election, when the EC issued a statement that those areas will not be voted. And his argument was that when Parliament resumed after the election, they could have followed through with that process in time because his point is, if there had been a runoff, the runoff would have taken place around 27th December. The runoff would have been done and would have had a swearing in on 7th. And so he says there is a window that an election could have taken place if they were minded to go through with the legislative process to have the realignment done. 
the election could have still been done before January 7, because in, in simple terms, the people have been denied the right of voting and representation, and he doesn't think that's how it gets well. And he's yeah. been arguing forcefully that, I mean, something needs yeah. to be done about it. And to think the commission wanted to take a break. I mean, like, when there was this important, these, outstanding these issue. These issues to, to exactly, deal with. To I mean, I, I, let me just push this in before we even get to the leave bit. The fact that, um, typically, the Attorney General should be representing um, the EC as well? No, the EC, uh, as an independent institution, has they have own their own lawyers. That law, lawyers. So, will, will they, um, will it be, they, the Attorney General represents uh, government. The states. The states right, yeah. the state. Yeah. Is the EC in this context considered as a completely um, autonomous entity that has nothing to do with the, with the state? And is that why the AG cannot represent them? So it's because of their independence as an institution. And so they, they have the right to get their own councils and have represented. Uh, because in, because of the role that they play. So the EC can choose to let the AG Yes, represent. but ideally, and what they do in terms of asserting their independence is to have their own council. Because the danger you could have is, mm -hmm. because their work is mainly election related, yeah. you could have a situation where, so like, Government like what is going to happen with the election petition now? I mean, the defendants will be Nana Akufado and the Electoral Commission. Those are the two defendants. And so you can imagine if the... You have the AG representing both. You have the AG representing, I mean, and uh, so it, it, it doesn't really help. It will be that, the, yeah. the, that interest yeah. clashing there. So they have their own... So we haven't ha had a response from our response the from one of the defendants, which is the EC. EC yes. Wow. Uh, which I think is sad, because I think the Electoral Commission, even though this is playing out in the courts, and I guess that's where we come in as media. Uh, some people may probably not have understood the issues properly. And so just be following the court issue in terms of the interim injunction and this action that's been taken by the AG now. But the main issue, I guess, for us as a people is the fact that some of our people mm. were not allowed to vote. It wasn't their fault. Yeah. And it was the fault of the Electoral Commission. So there had to be a provision for them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's why they are in court. But now the AG is saying that you've gone to the wrong court. Yes, and so the Supreme Court should exercise its supervisory jurisdiction to set that action aside. And so, I mean, the substantive question that remains is what steps? Because the ministry, the Attorney General is also a ministry responsible for justice. And so, yeah. so I was just going to say that. that what is, is being the done ministry, to... the Attorney General Ministry of Justice fighting against its own people? That's well, controversial. They will tell you it's controversial. They are defendants. <laughs> they are fighting for the, the rights of those who have also elected their MPs and they deserve their MPs. Listen, you're watching and following the issues. Kindly send us your thoughts, particularly yes. if you're in these areas. Gifty would share so what number, you sent to us. Yeah, the number is 0540109009. That's 0540109009. I mean, some of you have been sending. Uh, uh, so let me just take this one. This one says, if things should continue this way, if things should continue this way, like this, then the people of SAL do not have a representative in parliament. Then what it means is, to us is that they should take their destiny into their hands and never recognize anybody as president. Well, you can't do that either. Yeah. They should avoid paying tax. That's illegal. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be arrested. How can we live in a country with lawlessness? Well, the, f the way you deal with lawlessness isn't being lawless yourself. Okay, so you can't take the law in your hands and be lawless because you feel someone has been lawless. There are processes that you can go through. You only make the, the, the situation worse. I had a question that has just escaped me. But then, <laughs> what, what, again, what it means is that these people in the next four years won't be represented. But do we have any precedence to this effect where some sort of provision can be made for them to vote? It, it's impossible because the problem is that so the constitution, what it, it tried to do was they want to create a situation where a government will, within the life of a parliament, create constituency for various reasons, especially mm -hmm. when parliament is very close. <laughs> and so you have 137, 137, 137, and you want to now get some up and then you decide to yeah. realign and create some additional constituencies from your stronghold, okay. then elections are held. And you <laughs> that, that would be a terrible yeah. precedent. Exactly. Yeah, so it true. has to be done before the dissolution yeah. it takes effect. Absolutely. So that's yeah. the, the, what it was trying to prevent. And unfortunately, yeah. we find ourselves in this situation. So it means that if by January, uh, midnight of January 6th, that is not carried out, then mm. it will be a real challenge. That no, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't be faced with this. We've come a long way. Today's December. To not, yeah, but I'm just saying that even as a democracy, we've come a very long way, 25 years. 
to be faced with this and this is a hurdle now like it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be. Yeah. like we should have known and we should have corrected it yeah so mind you our electoral commission has been invited and has been one of the, cited as one of the best yeah. in the region yeah. and sometimes we've been invited to go and supervise other people's uh, mm. elections so the point mama is saying that we've matured enough to to not those such things. yes to not make this these mistakes but joseph if the court says that uh, the supreme court well, if the AG argues that you have no jurisdiction, the whole High Court has no jurisdiction to sit over this matter, does it give the people, um, I mean, what options are available so the, for the, the people? The options would be they could go to the High Court to enforcement, seeking enforcement that, I mean, look, we are residents here, we had the voting rights. As a result of creating of, creation of the regions, we were told that we cannot vote here, but provision was not made for us, and that amounts to a breach of our rights. I mean, once they make that point, and make the ask for various remedies the court should be able to give some directions as to what should happen and so i mean if the supreme court is minded to agree with the position of the ag uh, then that should there should be some steps that they should be able to take at the high courts if that does mm -hmm. not happen and they rather say that look the high court can actually go ahead to hear the matter then obviously the litigation at that level also goes on uh, but if the injunction is re removed then it means that john peter Beu uh, will be will be sworn in as joseph okay. let's also talk mm. about the abridgment of time because as this issue has been discussed uh we forget that the date sets was in january but yeah. the 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 ag wants it to come forward explain that bit and so the the january dates is because when you file an issue and this one they are going on notice and so you need to give the defendant a 14-day window for the person to enter an appearance and respond and so the abridgment of time it's a separate application that you are simply asking the court that look there's an extraordinary circumstance it's a matter that we must hear immediately it's got implications on the composition of the next parliament yes and more importantly serious implications for the election of a speaker of mm. parliament mm. Uh, which once is carried out if you want to undo it you mm -hmm. you need two thirds of parliament and already if it is 137 137 if the injunction is enforced and you cannot Mr. Amewu is not sworn in and he cannot vote. It means that it becomes what? 136, 137, and <laughs> one, one independent. So you get 137, 137. Yeah. And one not voting. And so it's, it's a, an exceptional circumstance. You are making a point that, okay, because of that, the court will hear the matter earlier than usual. What I've been trying to find out is the date for the abridgment. That is what I'm not. That's sure. today, Wednesday, 30th. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's today. That application for uh, abridgment of there, time. There are times is in the past that abridgment of time, when granted, the court there and then hears the matter. Mm. Because you can ask that, okay, it's supposed to be 12 January, but because of the exceptional circumstances, grants the abridgment for us to hear the case right now. So that will be heard today, and it will be That's interesting, uh, um, you okay. know, where, because this is the first working, no, second working day after the holiday. After the holiday. Uh, and then after tomorrow, because the next day is also a holiday. And then yeah. we get into the, so well, it's I interesting how things are playing out. Let's hear some comments, Gifty. Yeah, yeah, so this one says, the EC is very incompetent. Mistakes are flying all over. And what happened in Hohoi too is not fair. But let's leave it to the court. FK, send that message from Kumasi. This one says, the, the people of Lolobi, Akbafu, Likbe, et al. have been disenfranchised. Yes, but the election of Peter Amewu is sacrosanct as far as Hohoi constituents have decided. The Electoral Commission should face the court. The swearing in is imin imminent. Uh, from Sir Stone, in Kumasi. I don't know if you guys have a, a comment on the back of that. It sounds, oh, it sounds it's like, like, it's it's like we have many sounds like the most plus when the black stars no, no, are playing. We, we have no, a lot of lawyers no, when no, the legal issues. the argument the person makes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Want me to read it again. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's similar. It just sounds like what the AG is saying. The whole is done. Like, I mean, the whole is done. Yes, you have concerns, but the whole is done. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Yeah, he said it's the the election of Peter Meu is sacrosanct as far as the whole constituents have decided. The electoral commission should face the court. So he's saying that the electoral commission should go and answer these questions at the court and to answer the questions to the satisfaction of the people of uh, Likpe, uh, etc. But as for the swearing in there, it say it, it it, that, that's what that's what this person said. Yo, Yate. <laughs> okay. Say judge. I'm sure I'm sure he was at the, 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 the jams that Amewu was dancing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I heard Shata, Shata Wale bag like two million or something. Oh, well, really? that's what the, ah, that's what what the bloggers they, are saying. They are alleging. Uh, they are alleging. That's what I'm alleging. That's some good money, man. But we can investigate. 
that's some good money. Oh, two, two, you, two million. You, you investigate. Uh, anyway, you will get okay. away with it. So this message says, <laughs> <laughs> will the defendants, will the defendants be Nanado inclusive? I thought the two parties are just the EC and one petitioner likely to be a John, to be John Dramani Mahama. A session made from the election manual. Teddy, okay, no, okay, so let's sense this one. Aha, uh -huh, so let's correct that. So no. it's a, it's the person who claims that they either won the election or they mm -hmm. should have been declared the winners, right? Mm -hmm. Or there was something wrong with it in, in this case, which if he goes to court, which will be John Mahama. Mm -hmm. But also the person who was validly declared winner and then the electoral commission. Yeah. So three parties. They are not, unlike the previous one, they won't have NDC as a NDC party join or NPP join. as a party yeah. join or any other person as a citizen who says, Amicus I have interest in the, yeah. in the case. Yeah. Once you or file, we stick to what you filed. Yeah. 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 And this okay. will be done in uh, 42 days. Yeah. That's what the court says. Yeah. We'll see. I knew from day one, one may think, it, it, this one says, I knew this from day one. One may think that the ruling party could not be easy to do this. Why? Because just after the voter registration, then the ostracization of the South District from the constituency, followed by the directive that no votes transfer. This is unfair. Is this accurate, Joseph? <laughs> well, the, after the the decision came before the voter registration exercise it was in june 2020 so the decision of the court supreme court came before the voter registration exercise in fact the that particular matter even before june had been pending in the courts for a while before it came up right after the creation of the new regions that issue came up strongly mm. it actually came up during the ndc's primaries actually because uh, some of the delegates even raised concerns that uh, those who were from those other areas yeah. who were within the party could not even Participated, so that's what led eventually to what happened at the Supreme Court, and that decision came out. Yeah, conspiracy theory. So Nelson from Atewubu <laughs> has a very interesting perspective. He says, "Interesting discussion. I now understand why Peter Amewu won the whole horse seat. <laughs> certainly, he says, certainly the South area has been dis disenfranchised. The EC will never solve this because any attempt to solve this gives the NDC a majority in Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, the whole hoi seat was never won. It was stolen. Uh, okay, he says, mark my words, this is not, if this is not solved immediately, we will see a replica. Repli okay, you, say that it, you are saying that it will be replicated after 2024. If you don't cry, na cry now, don't ever cry anytime thereafter. Nelson from Atebubu. I don't think it will hey, yo, we hear you. be repeated. I mean, <laughs> that it will be replicated in 20, uh, 2024. Okay, Electoral Commission has not paid we the temporary office. <laughs> I'll read the message. It's from Samuel in Kumasi. Samuel says, Electoral Commission has not paid. We the temporary officials who conducted the exhibition in general elections. Uh, Samuel, I'm sorry about that, but we get a number of some of these messages, people asking for their monies to be paid by the Electoral Commission. Yeah. Yeah. They should, they should pay them. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Shall okay. we call it a wrap? Yes. Uh, I still have a lot of messages, but yeah. Okay, one more. One more. Okay, let me see. Let me take this one that just came in. Mama V, okay. Mama V and friends, our EC and the government are dead goats. The whole hoi seats should be done again, right from Pando. Well, we don't think that's going to are you, It doesn't yeah. look like that's going to happen. <laughs> it's in court now, so. Or it's, yeah. Okay, so um, Joseph is a man who keeps his ears on the ground uh, on this abridgment of time. And then also the NDC. Uh, which is likely to file today. Otherwise, then they won't they won't be going to court. Yeah, they will not I have guess. a cause of action. So just uh, just but, but they voted in the presidential election, right? Yes, they voted yes. in the presidential. Someone election. is asking. They, they voted. voted. Oh yeah, the they did. They voted. So they were not given uh, ballot papers for parliamentary elections. Only they were just given presidential. Elections. Elections. Yeah. yeah. So just uh, we'll be keeping up as up to the before we wrap up at night. If anything comes up, trust that Joseph would would hint us and we'll bring that to you. Thank you all for your messages. We're going to be talking about something that will happen across our country tomorrow. Would you be swishing over, crossing over, jumping zooming over? over. Zooming over. Yeah. I'll be walking slowly over. <laughs> we'll zoom that. over. He'll it's be walking slowly. slowly. Monitoring Why? What, which part of that don't you understand? It means that he'll be at the beach or something like that. The uh, beach is... Uh, that, would be, that would be illegal. No, it won't be illegal. Uh, 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 the beaches are... They are closed there. Yeah. Yes. I saw I saw, I saw, I saw a post that in said your dreams. Someone was, you know, after the president, the last address, someone yeah. was asking that uh, where did he think we celebrated this election as 
<laughs> and some people are asking. They say the <laughs> president. They say that the president said we shouldn't go to the beach. Does he have an Instagram account? <laughs> yes, actually, a lot of a lot of something. Because people are putting a lot of pictures <laughs> of themselves on the beach. Oh my but god! But seriously, coronavirus yeah. is still. Really yes, yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Okay, so when we come back, we will be talking about uh, the watch night services. But one of the biggest events, obviously, is the crossover by the ICGC. So we will talk about how they are doing it this year. Is there an independent square? That's all coming up right after this.